Uh, first of all, I'm a pastor locally. I love our church and I'm a church planter now. So I'm jumping off the cliff of faith and trusting that the Lord will make the church plant survive and work and all those wonderful things. So uh, trust in his provision in the midst of our plans and he's rerouting things. So that's been really fun. We're planting a church called the Shepherd's House Bible Church in Chandler, Arizona. And I currently live about 20 minutes outside of Phoenix and was in California prior, pastoring for about seven years there. Have an incredible wife. We have four kids, ages seven, five, three, and 19 months. So we stay busy in the hen house. And then uh, also, I've written some books and, and done some work, but how um, I got to this point and where some of these topics that I like to write on came from is I was a, a, a family member and really a, a, an employee and grew up in what a lot of people would know as or refer to as the prosperity gospel. Um, the Word of Faith movement, and and so my uncle is Benny Hinn, and we're very close. My father is his brother, and I worked for my uncle, traveled with my uncle, grew up, and my father was a pastor in Vancouver, British Columbia, and uh, traveled the world as a healing evangelist. My uncle as well, who's fairly known um, in those circles, and uh, so later on in my life, I went through a different season of transition where I started actually scrutinizing and asking questions of, of some of the theological views and some of the things that we had taught. And I had always had little questions, but overall, um, still to this day, love my family like crazy and thankful for them and appreciate them in so many ways. But we were taught really never to question things. Well, I started questioning some of the things and mostly related to money and what we were teaching about money. And then the lifestyle, we flew in Gulfstream jets and I stayed in the nicest hotels in the world and drove Ferraris and Bentleys. I drove a Hummer throughout college. And um, there were some people who came into my life really lovingly and just pressed in lightly asking questions and some more heavily. One of those was a coach. I played Division I baseball at Dallas Baptist University. It's a D1 in Texas. And my coach, super loving, but started asking just different questions like, hey, help me understand what you believe about that or why you believe that. And um, so when you have to give answers for things, you start thinking in new ways. And and then I met a gal who is my wife now, and she asked logical questions like, hey, the Bible teaches this, and, but you drive a, a Hummer, and, and that's fine. I'm sure the Lord is okay with people having cars or, or nice things aren't sin, but how you got it and this and that. She would just ask little questions um, and sometimes big questions about different uh, prophecies or things that we said that didn't come true. And then we would say, well, God changed his mind. and and just different things that deserve at least deeper discussion. And so that got me thinking. And then later on, a pastor in California, a good brother and friend of mine still to this day, uh, walked with me through a sort of genesis into healing and God's power and God's sovereignty and who he is and what he does. And I came to the realization personally, Sean, that I was treating God like a magic genie. And if I rubbed him right, with enough faith and enough offerings and serving the right way and, and submitting to my uncle and my dad and, and doing what I was told and never questioning. And what we would say is, you know, touch not the Lord's anointed. Don't ever question the anointed leader. You could really be come under judgment or, or frustrate the Lord or make the Holy Spirit grieve. But I came to a realization where I need to just make sure the Bible is shaping my view. And not my opinion, and even as much as I love my family, not my love for my family, and not the anointed heritage that I viewed myself as being a part of, but truly let the scriptures do the talking and the heavy lifting. And so through that journey, the Bible became a filter through which I made decisions and formulated positions, uh, believe still, and, and I'm thankful for the Holy Spirit's powerful work in my life then and still now. Uh, but I, again, came to a personal realization that I was treating God like a magic genie, sort of a cosmic banker, and his will was for me to be healed and healthy and wealthy and all those things were his will right now. And if I just did these things, I could have it. And I came to what I would call a greater understanding of who God is, not merely what he does. And that humbled me. I wept, I repented of some of the things that I taught and believed and just said, hey, I want to preach the true gospel. I don't want to add things to it and just want to serve people and even have the hard conversations about these type of theological challenges. So um, a pastor, I love people. I love God's word and I'm thankful for his mercy and love for me.